welcome back to my channel. So a few weeks ago I did a video on my nighttime routine where I showed you guys that I use my own homemade DIY moisturizer on my face and body every single night and I asked you guys to let me know in the comments if you wanted to see a recipe for it. And at the time, I didn't really think that anyone would be interested in seeing that kind of thing. But I had so many comments from you guys requesting this video. And I'm more than happy to share my recipe with you guys. And I figured while I was at it, I would show you guys my recipe for a natural DIY tanning foam. Which I've also been making and using for a couple of years. And I feel like a tanning foam is something that you don't really see around. Like, you see so many other DIYs for face masks, body scrubs, lip glosses, things like that. But I don't think I've ever really seen a good tan recipe so I'm really really excited to share this one with you guys today I also feel like tanning products are something that people are a bit iffy about some people tend to think that they're totally okay to put on your skin a lot of other people worry that they might cause cancer you never really know what are in these products and how that's going to affect your body so I like the fact that when you make your own you know exactly what's going into it you know that it's natural and you can have the confidence that it's not going to do anything harmful to your body all right so let's jump straight into it all right so we are just starting off with our all natural base ingredients and I'm going to list all of these and where I got them from down in the description box below and this first main ingredient is cocoa butter. I've got 60 grams of that and it comes in block form, but don't worry, it's all gonna melt down and mix together a little bit later down the track. The second ingredient is two teaspoons or 10 grams of golden jojoba oil. This is a beautiful oil and so good for your skin. Next, we have 60 grams or four tablespoons of apricot kernel oil. This is another one that's really lovely on your skin. Next we have shea butter and I've only got 15 grams of that, so about half of what we put in for the cocoa butter. Then I have this emulsifying wax. I have two tablespoons of that and this is just going to help it turn into that beautiful moisturizer type consistency. Then I just have a quarter teaspoon of rosehip oil and then I have some vitamin E. I've got two teaspoons of that in there. Okay, so next I'm just taking a bowl and I'm going to start putting all of the ingredients into that bowl. One ingredient that I forgot to mention earlier is vegetable glycerin. This stuff is like a really thick consistency type syrup stuff and it goes into the moisturizer and helps it spread really nicely. So I've got two tablespoons of that and I'm just gonna pour that in with the rest of the ingredients as well. The next step is to just take our heat proof bowl and throw it into the microwave for 20 second intervals until most of the ingredients are melted. You might find that your cocoa butter doesn't melt as well as what the other things do just because it's a thicker block, but I find it's just easier to stir it after the rest of the ingredients are melted because they will be warm and they'll help that cocoa butter melt. You don't want to keep putting it into the microwave too many times otherwise the mixture will start to boil and you really don't want that to happen because then your moisturizer won't turn out. So once all of those ingredients have melted down together they'll create this really beautiful golden syrup mixture and what we're going to do next is just take away that bowl, set it on the side for a bit and replace it with a larger bowl. I'm using the Pyrex ones because they're heat proof and I'm just pouring in 400 milliliters or like a cup and a half of cold water and taking my stick mixer. I'm sure you guys have one of these at home, but if you don't, you can use a whisk or a blender if you're going to be really careful with it. And I'm just pulsing the stick mixer while I gradually pour in the golden syrupy type mixture. And the reason for doing that is because I don't want any of the ingredients to mix too quickly, otherwise they might not react properly and the moisturizer might not thicken. So once all of the ingredients are combined, you can just go around really carefully and blend them together. 
and provided that you don't over blend them and you keep a good eye on what you're doing, your moisturizer should thicken to the right consistency. And to store the moisturizer, I'm just taking this clear plastic pump bottle, which I bought from the dollar store, and I'm just going to try and get the moisturizer into the container. I hope you guys are better at this than I am. I took like a glad wrap bag, a sandwich storage bag, filled it with moisturizer and tried to pipe it in, and that didn't turn out so great. But like I said, hopefully you guys will do this neater than what I will. But once you do manage to get it into the container, you have this really lovely smelling hand, face and body lotion. The next ingredient I have to show you guys is DHA or dihydroxyacetone if you want to use the long name. And I'm going to show you guys where I got this from in the description below like the other products. This stuff is amazing. It comes from plants, although it can be chemically engineered as well. I'm using the plant-based one and it is the only ingredient in any tanning product which actually stains your skin long term. So I've just melted this down a little bit or softened it in the microwave and I'm just breaking it apart a bit so when I mix it with water here, and that's just 200 mils of water by the way, or a cup, that it will dissolve properly. And as you can see, I'm just taking a paddle pop stick and stirring it around until everything is combined. Next, I'm taking a tablespoon of desyl glucoside and vegetable glycerin. These are both natural products and they are just gonna help thicken and turn the tanning mixture into a foam. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and add a tablespoon of brown or raw sugar. And these are actually really good for your skin, but also in this recipe, they help the liquid stick to your skin rather than just run off your skin and give the DHA time to work its magic. And then of course, if you want to add some nice scents into your tan solution, I'm just putting in a vanilla scent here, but you can put in whatever you like. And then I'm just gonna stir it all together. And you'll notice that there's some bubbles forming on the top. That's just from the glycerin and desyl glucoside. So as you can see, I'm just taking this pump bottle, which again, I got from the dollar store and using a pouring jug this time to pour the solution into the container. And I'll just let you guys know, if you don't want to make a tanning foam, you can always add the DHA directly to your moisturizer to create a gradual tanning moisturizer, which is really cool. And now it is finally time to put our tanning foam to the test. So I will start by just squirting some of it onto my hand. You'll notice that it's coming out white when regularly you would have a tanning foam come out brown. This is because the ones you buy in the store have dyes put in them so they show up on your skin immediately, but that is not actually the, the tanning component of it. That's actually something that develops a lot later. Um, so we're just gonna put it onto our skin and you'll notice as I rub it onto my legs that it comes up quite white and foamy. This is from that glycerin and desyl glucoside. And I find it just helps you figure out where you're actually putting the tan because it's a clear tan solution. And it actually fades after a little bit as well. So it's not gonna stick around the entire time you're waiting for your tan to develop, which should be about eight hours just to let you know. Of course, if you don't want to spend the time making your own tan, it's so much easier and cheaper in the short term to just get yourself a tanning foam from the store. I've got this one from Loving Tan and I'm just gonna give it a go to use it to compare with my own tan solution. So you'll notice straight up that this is a brown solution and I'm using a mitt to put it on so it doesn't stain my hands. And it actually went on really evenly. I have to say that I quite like this tanning foam and straight away you can see there's a huge difference in my legs. Please mind all the bruises, I have very low iron. So I'm just gonna give both tans about eight hours to develop so we can see the exact results that we're getting from both. And I will make sure to have a shower before showing you guys the end results too so all of those dyes are washed off as well. 
All right, so as you can see, there's a big difference between my loving tan leg and my homemade tan leg. My homemade tan leg is a bit more bronzy golden, whereas my loving tan leg is that bit more pinkish. And you can see there's an obvious difference from the base of my foot to my leg that the tan has actually worked. It has developed really well. And I'm actually quite happy with both tans. They both went on evenly, consistently, and I like the color of both. All right, everyone, so I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. As per usual, it was so much fun to make. I've been wanting to share these recipes for such a long time, and I'm so glad that you guys were interested in seeing this kind of thing. If you wanna see more videos like these, then please let me know in the comments because I feel like DIYs, recipes, and budget buys are like my all-time favorite videos to do. And this one seemed to tick all three boxes. Now, I know you might feel like buying all of these products at first might feel like it's very, very expensive expensive but they do make so much product but you will find in the long run that you are getting your money's worth and with the moisturizer in particular like if you're using it all the time like I do like I use it on my body James uses it we put it on all of the kids it's just a really good product to use so for me it has definitely been worth that initial investment and both the moisturizer and the tan keep really well also I do recommend to keep them in a cool dry space like a bathroom cabinet I like to keep mine in the fridge don't ask me why I just do on those summer days here in Australia where it gets super duper hot. I just love being able to go to the fridge and put on my cold moisturizer to just cool my whole body down. It's the nicest feeling. You guys have to try it sometime. And even the same with the tan on a hot day. Definitely not as good when it's winter and you're like, Oh, this is so cold. But at least you have the confidence in knowing that it's not going to expire like a lot of the other DIY natural products can. Anyway, so I'm gonna leave you guys there. Give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Hit that subscribe button if you are new and you wanna see more videos like this. And other than that, I'll see you guys all next week. Bye.